Michelle at prayer.templeoflightcsl.org. A practitioner is now available to pray with you immediately following our Sunday service. Chima Alcock is on duty today. The number to call is 876-289-0907. Grief support and counseling are available. Please call 876-27, sorry, 2927-6145. Donations, tithes, offerings. Thank you for your generosity and for helping us to be a beacon of light in the world. If you wish to support our ministry financially, kindly visit our donate page at donate.templeoflightcsl.org, which has our banking details. Thank you, as together we support a world that works for everyone. Now I'll ask Auntie Angela to come and make an announcement. Thank you, Tyrell. Whoa. <laughs> um, just just um, announcing that, well, some of you might have noticed that Wisdom Circle, we've not been having it for a few uh, I think a few months, for various reasons. Just letting you know, we're starting again next week, and it's going to be every first Sunday, just once per month. For those of you who um, don't, haven't come across Wisdom Circle, it's a casual gathering after church, um, has been very well supported and really well um, enjoyed, and we take a book and we just read chapters of that book and we discuss. discuss. There's always lively discussion, in-depth discussion, enlightenment, especially when the ministers are with us. Um, so come along. We're starting with Joel Goldsmith, Consciousness is What I Am. So that's a great book. So hoping to see you every first Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Angela, for that. Um, so now Reverend Michelle will demonstrate something special to practice at home. Thank you. Grand, grand rising. And 
happy Resurrection Day. So I'm going to ask the youth if you would assist me. Can you all come on over, please? Spring has sprung, and it's a time for planting of new seeds. And those seeds represent new thoughts, new behaviors, new realities. So the children are going to be, and young adults, are going to be modeling behavior for you all, something that you can do when you're at home. We plant seeds into our consciousness, knowing that what will bloom is what it is that we are planting. This ritual symbolizes the seeds today of their intentions, and when you elect to do it, your intentions. For the remainder of the year, we're only a quarter of the way through the year, you all, but we get to reset right here and right now. So think for a moment and this is everyone think for a moment about the things you want to accomplish this year and to the youth i'm going to make a statement of affirmation you will repeat it after me just like we rehearsed yesterday <laughs> and while doing so plant a seed in the soil the seed represents your thoughts so think good thoughts and plant good seeds of intention. So I'm just going to ask you, Terrell, what intention do you have for the remainder of 2024? To get eight ones in my CXC in. <laughs> all right, so are you all ready? All right, we're going to do this with conviction. I commit to being the best that I can be. I plant seeds of gratitude for all things. I plant seeds of gratitude for all things. I plant seeds of possibility. I plant seeds of possibility. I renew my connection with spirit. I renew my connection with spirit. Self and others. I renew the strength and courage of my heart. I renew the strength and courage of my heart. I renew inner peace. I renew inner peace. I renew my ability to forgive. I renew my ability to forgive. I plant seeds of love. I plant seeds of love. Peace. Peace. And joy. And joy. I renew myself daily. To be the best version of myself that I can be. To be the best version of myself that I can be. And so it is. And so it is. So to you, youth, I remind you to nurture your thoughts. Watch them bloom into the life that you are creating right here and right now. Thank you very much. God is blessing you now. So let's bless them with our applause. Thank you. You'll be seeing more of them today. Absolutely. We will repeat that last affirmation. I'll state it and you all recite it after me. I renew myself daily, I renew myself daily. to be the best version, be the best version of, myself of myself that I can be. And so it is. Thank you. Please join me in the prayer of our center. Please stand. The Temple of Light. 
Center for Spiritual Living is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ, peace, love, and joy emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light of the Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and is growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth, guiding us ceaselessly along the path of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and the glory forever. And so it is. And now for our first hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. seated. I will now ask Teriel to share an inspirational piece. Blessed Grand Rising everyone and happy Easter. Happy Easter to you, Teriel. The inspirational reading today is called Rising Up. Do not think that you must wait until you die to know eternal life. Life in its fullness is here now. That quote is by Nona L. Brooks. If we are incarnations of God, then our spirit is God individualized, and as such, it must be eternal. That quote is also by Ernest Holmes from the book Living the Science of Mind, page 91. On this day, Christians around the world will celebrate the resurrection of Jesus as their savior. However, in science of mind, Easter takes on a different meaning. Those who practice new thought view Jesus as a master teacher who led by example, telling people that what he did, they could do also. In rising from the dead, he showed that life is eternal. 
After life on this earth, life continues as the consciousness is freed from the body to express in another plane of existence. Ernest Holmes encouraged people to focus on this life, connecting with the kingdom of heaven within themselves to express their highest and best, letting go of any worries about what might come next. On another level, the resurrection of Jesus offers the lesson that just as a stone was rolled away from the entrance of Jesus' tomb, we too can roll away the stone of our small selves to let our true selves express a higher and deeper level of consciousness. In essence, living from the Christ within us. Just as Christmas is a celebration of the birth of the Christ consciousness, the consciousness of oneness within each of us, Easter can be a time where we commit ourselves to removing whatever blocks us from expressing the Christ consciousness that is our true nature. We can metaphorically roll away the stone of ego and fear, allowing our true self, the self that sees through the eyes of love and oneness, freedom to express. Please repeat this affirmation with me. I am resurrected in spirit. I am resurrected in spirit. Allowing my true self the freedom. Allowing my true self the freedom. To express in deeper and greater ways than ever before. To express in deeper and greater ways than ever before. Thank you very much. Thank you, Teriel. Please help me welcome Reverend Michelle to inspire us this morning. Good morning again. You all ready to go to school? <laughs> the reason I say school is because you know Science of Mind is supposed to be an educational institution. Never, never was it thought to ever become a church, but in order to perpetuate the teaching, it had to become a church. So what we do primarily is educate. And so what I'll be educating you on is the metaphysical uh, meaning and significance of the various aspects of the resurrection, the tomb, the crucifixion. So don't go back to sleep. <laughs> Perhaps the greatest mystery of Christianity in the entire world is the story of the crucifixion and the resurrection of the man called Jesus. Did it really happen? Did it happen in a way that the Christian gospels tell us? And just as importantly, why did it happen? How could Jesus the man who could raise the dead, walk on water, turn water into wine, be crucified, died in the most excruciatingly and painful way? without intervening with his own divine power. For the answers to these and many other questions that humanity has been asking for nearly 2,000 years, I consulted various spiritual texts and traditions to help me understand what the event meant for Jesus, for myself, for you, and for the world. The simple metaphysical explanation of the death of Jesus by crucifixion is a true story. But the way that it happened has been revised over the centuries. The consequences of those revisions have had a profound effect on the teaching of Christianity. Much emphasis has been placed on the pain and the suffering that Jesus went through in the process. We were talking about the stations of the cross earlier this morning and as a Catholic how I had to sit through that painstaking reoccurrence, reenactment every year at, at Easter. Yet the metaphysical message of these events is that there is no suffering, there is no death, for life is eternal. The rock upon which I will build my church, said Peter, the first apostle, 
when he saw Jesus upon the cross, Jesus was quiet, silent even. And there was no evidence that there was any pain that he was experiencing. It didn't show up on his face. Peter reports that Jesus was on the cross for six hours, stating it was midday when he was nailed to the cross. Jewish custom said that the sun is not to set on the ones that are put to death. In other words, someone executed must be buried before dark falls. The midday referenced by Peter six hours on the cross before death and burial before dark actually fits the custom of the Jewish philosophy and tradition at that time. According to the Roman records, the average time on the cross before death was three days. A person being crucified died of suffocation when they could no longer support their weight and their diaphragm could no longer function. Jesus the Christ died in six hours. Did Jesus have a choice? Of course he did. And he chose to leave this earth in a very visible and public way. Ask yourself, of what value would the resurrection be if Jesus died of old age? <laughs> if there is anything I have learned in studying and teaching metaphysics for over 40 years is to focus on the increasingly larger story, the backstory behind the story. What does that mean? You focus on the details a little less. In this case, you might want to focus on the energetic of the events at that time. So if you had that upbringing where you, ah, you went through the stations of the cross every year, what was going on? There's a lot of pain, right? There's a lot of suffering. However, from a metaphysical perspective, we focus on the energetic. The energetic that was extant at that time was judgment. Jesus was judged wrongly or rightly in the minds of the judger. But judgment leads the way away from productivity and upliftment, but rather into things of lower order. Jesus chose crucifixion because he was taking on the karma of the entire world. He assisted in the evolutionary movement of humanity forward to a new level of consciousness. Jesus was altering the energy to make it possible for each of us to go deeper within ourselves, a process that we still practice today, yes? <laughs> we call it contemplation, we call it meditation, we call it introspection and reflection. What Jesus was doing was bringing love as law. He was bringing a new way of being, with the race consciousness at that time, he knew it was going to take a while for this idea of love to permeate the entire planet. So let us return just for a moment to some of the details of the events. Did Jesus have to drag or carry his own cross to Calvary? Yes, but he had some help and he didn't have to do it alone. Was he made to wear a crown of thorns? Maybe, some say probably not, but those ideas do fit with the pain and the suffering and the belief system that many of us were raised with. And what about Judas? Judas's relationship with Jesus was close and quite complex and is a story unto itself. Won't go into that one today. However, metaphysically, Judas represents guilt which remains in the collective human consciousness presently. Judas took on the persona of the saboteur, just as humanity sometimes sabotages itself, just like each one of us sabotages our own dreams. There was also betrayal, but Jesus allowed the betrayal to happen. The cross, itself is a highly symbolic and ancient symbol that predates Christianity. There are cave drawings in Africa and places like Europe that exist from prehistoric times that include the cross. Metaphysically, the vertical bar connects heaven and earth. 
and indicates that there is no separation between the two. The horizontal bar connects time and space. The significance of the cross is eliminating the barrier of time and space and connecting heaven right here on earth without separation. That's what we believe. The message of Jesus is expressed and reinforced by the cross. So when the crucifixion was complete, Jesus' body was claimed by Joseph, a friend of Pilate. And this was a pre-arrangement. Dust was falling, and Jesus' body was taken to his tomb for burial without all of the usual ritual preparations of the Jewish custom because night was falling. His body was washed and tied in a linen cloth and placed in the sepulchre called the Garden of Joseph of Arimathea. Three days in the tomb symbolizes the trinity of Mother God, Father God, and eternity. The tomb itself represents humanity's disconnect from its own divinity. We have minimal access to our divinity in the dark universe that the collective consciousness has created. With all the wars going on currently, corruption, humanity is in this dark tomb, disconnected from its higher self. We, as truth seekers, can come out of our own self-imposed tombs by recognizing our divinity. We can walk out of our tombs just like Jesus did. This is a symbolism and the message of the tomb. Did the resurrection really happen? Yes, it did. Was the resurrection of the body or was it resurrection of the spirit? The resurrection was of the spirit. Did Jesus appear to those who saw him after this crucifixion as a living, breathing man in the flesh? Yes, they did. How did this happen? Because Jesus was divinely personified and he could appear in any form that he wished to. He chose to appear as human. But the resurrection of the body would contradict his teachings, which included the reincarnation of the one spirit expressed as each and every one of us. We release our bodies upon death to claim a new form when we are reincarnated with the one. So the resurrection was Jesus' experience, but it wasn't just about Jesus. The resurrection is a universal reminder of God's grace and power functioning in humanity. The resurrection represents our power to overcome, to restore, to renew with health, peace, love, prosperity, and joy, whatever it is we're trying to revive in our lives. So just think for a moment, just go within for just a moment. What are you trying to revive in your lives? Is it more joy? Is it more happiness? Is it more love? Is it more peace? Is it more prosperity? Now is a fortuitous time. Jesus the Christ understood the power within himself and he urged his followers to accept the truth about themselves. He knew that we cannot outperform our own consciousness. Let me say that again. He knew that we cannot outperform our own consciousness, meaning that our actions and our achievements in life are limited by the level of awareness and understanding that we have about ourselves and the world around us. Jesus taught that we could prove the overcoming power of God as he did and assured us that we could do even greater deeds. And that's, of course, if we don't go back to sleep. <laughs> Meaning that we don't forget the truth of who we are and our oneness with the all-powerful, all-knowing life force that is God. Matthew 4, 17 says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Meta metaphysically, this verse can be seen as an invitation to wake up and stay awake, to higher consciousness, transform ourselves internally, and recognize the presence of divine truth and fulfillment in every single moment. Here's another interpretation. The kingdom of heaven, representing peace, harmony, and spiritual fulfillment, 
is within reach, within our reach, and can be experienced through our inner awakening and alignment with the teachings of Jesus. And his teaching reminds us that if we live in this way, that God will order our steps in the world. Easter is a time of spiritual renewal, the process of revitalizing our spiritual life, beliefs, and practices. It involves a deepening of our connection with the divine, a recommitment to our spiritual values, a refreshing of our faith. Like the seeds that the youth just planted during the ritual, the deeper we sink our roots and nourish the soil of our minds, will they bloom in kind. So I offer five suggestions for spiritual renewal. The first is question your beliefs. Regularly questioning your deeply rooted beliefs is akin to inspecting the soil that they grow in. This helps to ensure that the growth of our convictions remain in flow, free from pollution and stagnation. Number two, recharge by unplugging. Allow yourself to be in touch with nature. Be away from the meaningless noise of the outer world and the incessant chatter of the inner one. Number three, break old patterns. Do you sometimes feel like you circle back to similar experiences in life? You know, you break up with one person, you start dating another person only to find that the same thing happens. <laughs> the pattern breaks when we change our reactions to different situations. We respond instead of react. And once we respond by understanding the tough task that is at hand and the need for us to rise above, to transcend, to excel, beyond the situation, it will no longer reoccur in our lives because it taught us what we needed to learn. Number four, find a source of contentment. Find what brings you fulfillment. What brings you joy? Find something that you can do to enhance your interior life. The inner life must be expansive and expressive. One is not happy unless they have a purpose for living. The individual life must avoid through self-expression, becoming stagnant, hmm. stuck in our comfort zones, hmm. afraid to experience the newness of life. So I encourage you to implement one of these spiritual renewal ideas. And once you do, there's no going back to sleep. And a quote from The Greatest Showman reminds us that you cannot go back again to the world that you were living in because you were dreaming with your eyes wide open. So the Easter story is a multifaceted jewel. Depending on where we are on our spiritual journeys, we can look at it and see devastation or triumph. We can see despair or promise. We may see Jesus ourselves and others or everyone all at once. We can consider it a call for compassion, an invitation to enter into the mystery of the tomb, that space between endings and beginnings, and know the truth for those who may have lost sight of it. It can also mean being tender and open to invite others into the tomb with us, to resist the temptation of going back to sleep, staying in our comfort zones, and stagnating and even becoming obsolete. So I'll close with a poem by the 13th century poet Rumi, entitled, Don't Go Back to Sleep. Don't go back to sleep. The breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what it is you really want. Don't go back to sleep. People are going forth and back and back and forth across the door seal where the two worlds touch, the worlds of spirituality and materiality. The door is round and the door is open. So don't go back to sleep. And so it is. Amen. Thanks, Rev. 
Youth Sunday is always the best. Our youth and Auntie Diandra will perform a mime to this beautiful and inspiring composition, Order My Steps. Now we'll have the love offering blessing. So just so you all know, we're going to expedite things today. Uh, we have ordered new offering boxes. They have yet to be made. So we have made a little one here. So we have one there. And there's another one someplace else. Where is it? There's one back there, so we can expedite the uh, collection of the offerings. And we'll do that, not on the peace song, but on the next hymn. We'll sing that together, and then we'll move to the collection boxes at the same time. So if you would pull your envelopes out of your programs or read the affirmation that's on the screen, it states, lovingly I give. Joyfully I receive, be thou fruitful, increase and multiply. Bless, prosper and enrich everyone whom you touch and replenish all my financial affairs. So be it. Thank you, Father. And so it is. And so now, Terrell's going to tell you what's up next. We'll now have our second hymn, Please Stand.
We will now have a musical item sung by Miss Peter Gay Bailey. Hi, good morning.
acknowledgments. Thank you, Mrs. Saku and the Floral Angels for our beautiful Easter Sunday arrangements this morning. <laughs> the tech team, the musicians, the ushers, and the hospitality ladies, thank you for making and doing, making the food and everything, and thank the tech team <laughs> for live streaming this on YouTube. <laughs> Over to Reverend Michelle to bless us up. Thank you, Terrell. And I especially want to thank the Floral Angels because I always coordinate my outfits in accordance with their flowers. <laughs> These happen to be a couple of flowers that I, I like. I um, also want to thank my friend Denise who took me to the orchid show and I took this picture for the program. So we are all coordinated. I'm so grateful. <laughs> so let's take that journey inward. Here's an opportunity to begin to really deepen our inner lives, you all. So let's just go within for a moment. Being reminded of the reason for this day, the tremendous opportunity of this day to start anew right here, right now, in this very moment. Because we are reminded that there's only one life. <clears throat> that life is God's life, and that's the life that I'm living, the life that you are living right here and right now, and it's a good life. I am giving thanks for the opportunity to change thoughts, because in changing thoughts, we change behaviors, and in changing behaviors, we change the demonstrations that we experience each and every moment in our lives. What an awesome power we have, and we use that power for good. We use that power to uplift ourselves, uplift others, uplift the consciousness of the world, because Lord, it needs it. I'm so grateful and thankful for everyone who has joined us today, those online, those in the sanctuary, those who want to be here for some reason could not be. For what I know, it is our collective consciousness that's going to cause the pivot, the slight shift that we need on this planet to restore it to the potentiality of what it can be, and that is good, that is loving, that is compassionate, that is empathetic. I call forth all these qualities of God expressed in and as and through me and as each and every one of you. So as we leave here today, we rejoice, for we are rejuvenated, we are reminded, we are refreshed in our faith and in our spirit, and to God be the glory. And so it is, amen. Now we'll have the peace song, Love. Please stand. 